Hello and welcome to New Earth Podcast. There's never been a more important time to find our tribe and build our community. So today we've brought together a lot of us who are involved with the People's Health Alliance and the Conscious People's Network to have a conversation round table about the importance of building community. So I'm just gonna start by getting you to introduce yourselves and I'm gonna go around the screen. So I'm gonna start with Paul. Oh, okay, look at me, hello everybody. Um, well, I, yeah, 35 years of a business change consultant, project manager in industry, uh, leadership coach, workshop facilitator. But for that time as well, in the background, there was a growing awareness of evolutionary, personal evolution things, getting more in touch with energies and frequencies and uh, intuition, really. So uh, my work now is, is uh, life coaching as well as uh, assisting holistic communities to come together and form and expand and grow and have done some wonderful work with Matt who uh, talk in a moment but um, in, in terms of positive living communities and uh, really assisting both the the uh, holistic aspects of growing community and the individual journeys that are involved in raising your vibration and frequency to find your own high vibe tribe so that's probably about it for now <laughs> that's fabulous paul and before i move on to matt just let me know why community building is important for you it's only the future of mankind <laughs> you know, we've been, been isolated <laughs> we've been isolated in little well islands and compartmentalized um deliberately to keep us uh in an unnatural separated state from other beings and we saw this very recently in the last three years, haven't we, in terms of the attempts to confine the human spirit. And that has failed on a lot of levels. And fortunately, a lot of us have used that as a springboard and a platform to find new levels of awareness and consciousness within us. And connection, amazing, thank you. Matt? Yes, well, well, I'm, I've, I've hooked up with Paul about uh, two years ago now, and we got together and we were talking about um, holistic community i'm an artist uh psychic time traveler um and i like to bring uh, information through in the way that i in part uh, do illustrations and and share that with other people um i've also sort of got uh, in contact with uh, extraterrestrials if you like um star family i call them and they're also sharing knowledge about their societies and how their holistic societies work and and uh, really trying to help us from within to discover our own way of building holistic societies because you know quite frankly everything's crumbling around you know all these authorities you know are, are trying to dictate everything and and it's really collectivism versus in uh, individualism and um staff family and lots of people on earth want to kind of don't want to be told what to do and want to w live their own lives you know governing themselves sensibly in their own communities and so really i've i've sort of helped set out a template uh called positive living communities.com and that's where we're kind of trying to uh supply information for people so that they can try and understand what holistic community is because frankly we've got about three options we've got option one which is kind of more authority and dictatorship and more sort of uh, corruption uh, option two you've got chaos and anarchy and everyone sort of breaks everything and burns everything and kills everyone and that's a lot of death and frankly option one and two are pretty much death interchanged there um, or you've got option three which is kind of flip everything around where you know we build communities where people actually support each other it's not about division or conflict it's actually about unity um, and bringing people together and sharing those wonderful skills together and building these wonderful kind of ecosystems that that um doesn't fuel kind of division and war and chaos and all that sort of stuff, but actually build strength in, in local communities. So that's kind of what I'm doing with Paul and, and many others such as yourself. Thank as you, well. Matt. And it would be wonderful to explore new models for community as well, because it's obviously Absolutely. quite a, a broad term. So it would be good to, to define, you know, what kind of models we can use later on. Thank you so much, um, Linda. Hello, um, I'm... Uh holistic social worker uh, practicing in New England in the United States. 
And um, for at least 30 years, um, I've been very concerned about what was happening with healthcare in the United States. Um, and also very interested in the idea of intentional communities and um, overcoming our differences and coming together as communities. Uh, and when I discovered the People's Health Alliance, which was forming in the United Kingdom, um, everything just sort of came together for me. Um, and at first I was looking for the People's Health Alliance in the United States and then a few months in, it dawned on me that I was going to create <laughs> the People's Health Alliance in the United States. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and so myself and uh, our core team have been working on that since 2022. And in 2023, May of 2023, we launched our website and we called that our birthday. Um, yeah. And since then, there's been momentum building. Um, I, I think we're We've had interest in about 25 of the 50 United States. Um, so uh, we're halfway there. <laughs> and um, we have regional um, groups now. We sort of, you know, we're, we're dealing with a fairly large country. Um, so <laughs> we kind of had to break it down into regions. Um, honestly, the Northeast region is probably the most um the most active at this point. And we see that as interesting because that's where the United States began. Um, so um, we feel like we're um, mirroring uh, our own history in some ways. It is our Pluto return. And we really feel like we're, we're, we're starting over in a way. Um, so it's been a very interesting journey. Um, we definitely have had ups and downs, but for the most part, it's been extremely positive. Um, we have definitely realized that we are a community um, and that that is what is most essential about what we're doing. Uh, and the people who have gotten involved with the PHA in the United States feel that this community is nurturing them at this point. So, you know, we, we started out thinking, well, we're going to change the way healthcare is delivered. And we realize that we're actually taking care of each other. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Linda, for anyone who doesn't know um, the PHA, would you mind just briefly let people know what it is? Okay. So the PHA uh, is the People's Health Alliance. It was started by three women in the United Kingdom who realized dur during COVID that their national healthcare system was broken um, and decided that they were going to return the power for health care back to the people so that people would take responsibility for their own health care, but also be given the power and the access to be able to form their own health care uh, plan. Uh, so it, in the United States, we have we've become a branch of that. Um, and we're doing it in a slightly different way than they did it in the United Kingdom, because we have private health care here and we're, you know, up against uh, a lot of insurance companies that are running our health care system. And that's been quite difficult, honestly. Um, so it's a different, you know, we have to have a different approach, but the, the principles are the same. Thank you. And I'll, I'll put the link to the People's Health Alliance in the description. And no matter where you're listening to this in the world, there are hubs in various countries and maybe you'll be like Linda wanting to start creating something in your country we're hoping that that's what yes. this conversation is going to inspire for for people and the, the the last count I believe was 23 countries that I saw amazing yeah. Athena hey hello everyone I'm Athena Melchizedek and um the reason I've joined this group is because I am looking for a community to actually be part of um, and, you know, in the physical world. I have spent um, the last 70 years being an expert in uh, <laughs> energy and consciousness, um, which is where it all begins. Uh, and that has involved a lot of traveling uh, to many different countries, 
really never settling too long in any one place. Um, most my expertise now is working with groups and working with group energy, uh, which it, I evolved into uh, from my own journey. And it's been very interesting to, for me to see um, what the, the 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 importance of um coming from a correct thinking about what community is truly about and why we need it uh you know it's part of our dna it's part of our evolutionary process that is why we're heading into community that is why everything is pushing us into community all the um, groups I've worked with have been online communities, some very beautiful, some very challenging. Um, but nevertheless, uh, people want to come together in group form, whatever they're doing. Um, and this is, as I say, part of the evolutionary impulse. So I'm very excited to hear what, what people have to share for those who have actually been able to um, to build community and to uh, to see what some of the problems are. I can certainly tell you what the problems are from my end of things. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited and looking forward to uh, to being part and parcel of the learning in this call. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Athena. And I think that's a really interesting point, you know, changing the, the models and, and finding out what's important in a community looking in, at the challenges and and for me a lot of it is is the shift from leaders into us stepping into a circle you know sh shifting that awareness to the more indigenous way where everybody has a voice and everyone has that ability to co-create in a community but obviously within certain frameworks you know because otherwise it's it's you know it's it's, it's that creating that vision as well about what what that community is. Would anyone like to speak to that at all? Is anyone feeling called? Well, well Paul, as a social work, sorry. I was gonna say Paul speaks well to that, um, but after you, so after you carry on. As a social worker, I spend a lot of time um, helping people feel safe to just be themselves. Um, and so I've, I've realized that as I'm building the community that I've been working on in the United States, it's really giving people a place to, as you said, find their voice, um, express themselves authentically, be who they are, and know that they have found a safe place to land. You know, that this is a place where people are going to be accepted as they are, not as they should be or as someone else decides they need to be. Absolutely. I think that's a really important point in the safety aspect, you know, holding those boundaries so that it is maintained as a healing space, because otherwise it has the potential to go off and become, you know, a, a place where people are working out their conflicts or whatever. So it's how we manage those those areas as well. Paul, did you want to to speak to this? I think Matt, Matt volunteered you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that was very kind of him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, there's Sorry, lots mate. Of already. There's <laughs> lots of different directions we can go, isn't it? This is such a rich area. I, I think one of the things that uh, myself and Matt and Matt's originated um, with is is how you get your basic human needs met in a community setting. So we've you know looked at Maslow's hierarchy of needs for the sake of a, a, a simple model and said well how do those get needs get met practically in a community setting so we've certainly done some work on that and I, I certainly see a lot of changes in leadership as well and we talk a bit about different types of community group that we come across and we sometimes talk about big c and little c community groups not being disparaging or anything but the last three years or four years has created uh, community groups that have come out of nowhere, really like stand in the park groups, as an example, all over the world, that have come together through a dissatisfaction of the status quo. Um, but 
there's a difference between coming together and, and feeling secure and safe in that you have a different view from the main narrative. And that's been very important up to a point for people to feel coming together in a group to feel safe. But then there's then what, so what do we do? And there are some yeah. people in these groups that just want to feel safe in that narrative uh, that they're, you know, different from other people. But when it comes to the practical steps of creating new communities, there's a bit of a pause. There's a bit of a blank sheet of paper and a scratching of the head. And, and so what, what myself and Matt are seeking to do and are doing uh, with the calls that we've done for the last 12, maybe 18 months nearly of uh, PHA hub builders around the world every fortnight is to actually just start to coach and mentor the, the nurturing the ideas that are coming out spontaneously. And what we've seen, which is so amazing, is that people are doing incredible stuff all over the world and you just don't hear about it. There's just some yeah. amazing success stories and people in New Zealand helping people in Portugal on the call. And, and it just all the magic happens when people come together. So I guess there's that um, part of it where that's big C community building, where people know about the status quo. They know, and this is where new people coming in uh, to the holistic community building scene would probably need a bit of a orientation and acclimatization phase because they're just simply there's so many things that are not true in the narrative space that's out there that coming to terms with that, if it's new for them, um, is going to be a big jolt to the system. But having other people around them that can assist that is part of what I believe we will be called to do as lighthouses in this in this uh, phase. And of course, that's a different type of leadership style as well. So I'm going to. I'll stop there because I'm sure there's lots of things to to talk about, but we've already. Uh, <laughs> Athena's, Athena's so wants that, to that you yeah, yeah. spurred her yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, I think I've just perfect follow on from that because um, I have noticed uh, this whole uh, the dual thing. You know, the people that the people that want safety and they want to they want to congregate for and feel safe. And I think that's what you what you brought out around that is really important. Um, and then the but what I, I'll tell you what I've experienced because um, and this is like you know working very very deeply with people's deep inner uh, stuff, which I, I know you guys do as well to 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 a degree, don't you? Um, all of you. Um, I have found that there is, um, and this is why I'm so so interested, you know, in being here. I have found that people are reluctant to step into their own leadership. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and this is why I've I've found it quite difficult to find to find a community that I wish to belong to, because. Um, having been a leader for most of my life uh, in one paradigm and then moving out of the old paradigm and being a leader in the new paradigm, um, which is more of an allowing. So what, what I have moved uh, personally from, uh, mind you, I was was pretty allowing even in the, in the old paradigm, but let's not, we don't need to go there in the business stuff. Um, but yeah, I just feel that um, I've, I've, I've been, um, I'm not going to say disappointed, just just being um, aware that to, to build real community in my heart, I want, want, it's the wrong word, I, I, I would love to see people truly standing in their own, you know, taking responsibility for yes. their own reality taking responsibility for, for rather than seeing a them and an us, um, right. taking the full responsibility for, for what they wish to create in the world and stepping into that. So it's really about stepping into power, into your power, a, a power that, that is a sharing power rather than a power over, which is kind of the old paradigm, which we're all kind of scarpering away from as fast as we can. And I take Paul, Paul's point as well, that we're coming into, particularly this year, the next few years, we're coming into 
a space where there are going to be so many people absolutely gobsmacked by what they're going to hear and see. Mm -hmm. And there is going to be more fear than, than even we, we've seen already. And so I think we just have to be, you know, it, it's a, it's like walking the tightrope, isn't it? You know, um, there are those of us that really long to build in, in the big C way. <laughs> uh, am I right? Have I got the, the definition right there? Yeah. And, and then there are, then there's the majority. I feel it is the majority um, that are going to still be in the small C way and wanting safety and wanting nurturance and wanting somebody to tell them what to do and, and to tell and to guide them gradually into into their into the the ability to feel that responsibility for themselves and not be dependent on another and I'm, and I'm only so passionate about this because I I work with so many people at so many levels who have got so many incredible ideas the, the ideas that some of these young, young, well, everybody's young to me, but, you know, you know, that the younger generation are coming in with now are phenomenal. You know, this is coming straight in through from source. This is the, the, these ideas, but, but still they've got, they, they, they require um, this, this understanding of how it really truly all works. I think um, I think you've made a really really important point there about self responsibility, and I think the shift is that we've we've always looked outside of ourselves for authority, and it's coming into that sovereignty, and it's a, it's a huge process. It's like finding what it is that interests us, and putting our hand up for that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's it, it's how we can all find that that joy of wow this is really what I want to create and and this is my piece in the puzzle to support the team as it were so does anyone else want to speak to self-responsibility and sovereignty yeah I, I think it's um well said you guys I mean really it's about um part of the process of waking up coming out of all this conflict is becoming self-aware it's becoming aware that you are an entity you are an, an individual you can choose and do things for yourself um, and part part of that process is that is the healing process because you know pretty much we're in this toxic world and people who are caring and gentle and sensitive do get pushed down and do suffer trauma while all the people toxic people kind of rise to the top so you know the one advantage of, of setting up holistic um, groups or holistic communities is the fact that you can as part of your process of bringing people into a different mindset, you can also support them, bring them into like a sanctuary area, a sacred circle where they've got, you know, there's no judgment, you know, uh, where basically it's a supportive, nurturing ecosystem. And then that kind of helps them to develop and be who they are with that, you know, without all the condemnation and all the trauma and stress. And then through that, that sort of process of healing and support, you know, people start to find their actual true light, their true inner kind of calling, their kind of um, more of their direction in, in life. And and then they start to blossom and, and start to assist others and stuff like that. So, you know, people who are looking for others to tell them when world peace is going to arrive are, are kind of still stuck in that dualistic world, really. I mean, it's down to each one of us. The formula is known. It's, it's harmonised itself within and then you're not creating conflict in the external world. And then if groups of those people get together and create a community, well, you know, that's going to be absolutely amazing. If they've got their own kind of village, they've got in, in each town, they've got their own kind of go-to person. You know, if you want food, go to the, the, the place where everyone meets up in a market. You know, you've got your local producers and stuff that come to an area and you can just, you know, visit this. You know, you can make a whole ecosystem for um for your community and and help people on that journey who want to come in and start healing and you know start being um part of something bigger you know and and feeling more bonded with other locals and, and making great friendships i mean it's already happening already so it's just a natural kind of evolution and a, and a sort of pushback from all that all that sort of control and, all, and false authority really it really is. And and this is New Earth podcast. And I always say New Earth 
arrives through us you know it's that sh inner work that shift in us that shift in our frequency that then manifests in the outside world of us coming into a more heart-based community linda you had your hand up yes as you were talking i was i was realizing that a lot of what i'm helping people with is stepping into their ability to manifest and I use myself as an example of that um, because I didn't know that I could manifest a community in the United States that has net, that now exists. I really didn't know that um, until I did it. <laughs> and then, and so I use myself and other people who I know in my community who have manifested as um, Paul was saying, amazing things that nobody knows about that are just <laughs> hidden, but, but, you know, one person who manifested in, in one of the things in my community is that they manifested during COVID when um, there was a bit of a food shortage, um, getting the grocery stores, the markets to give them all the food that had dates on it that, you know, those dates that really don't mean anything <laughs> um, that they would throw away getting the markets to give the um or this or small organization all that food and they just let people um line up with their cars open their trunk and they fill their trunk with food um no questions asked no you know no criteria for who who should be there and who shouldn't be there doesn't matter um, do what you want with the food but we don't want to throw it away but being able to manifest and that. realizing that you can do this, that you absolutely, and, and that our ability to do this is so much greater than probably it was even 20 years ago. I yeah. love that. And that's very much the shift that we're going through because we've been programmed with scarcity models. So how can we shift into visioning, setting intentions for abundance for the whole community and knowing that we've, we, we hold that? Does anyone want to speak to that, Paul? Yeah, I think this is just uh, amplifying really the need for overall two pot potentially two journeys, and the 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 individual journey is about how I get my my manifesting kind of in alignment with my highest purposes, my passions, the things that bring me joy and bliss, and and that journey then raises my personal vibration to a higher level of of an ability to create. And then when I move into a group setting or a holistic community setting with other people um, who are also of that higher vibration, then wow, the things that people can create on that energy form and signature and togetherness, that's the high vibe tribe manifesting together. So the processes of manifesting are incredible for the individual when they can get their in It's an inside out job, isn't it? And manifesting is an inside out job. So when we've got our own alignment within and then we go and uh, meet with and work with and co-create with like minded, same frequency, vibration, outlook and, you know, ability to create magic together. We see some incredible things happen that like wouldn't normally happen that haven't happened before, but they just happen. And, th and this is also about getting out of your own way as a leader. Because we, we've also seen some uh, community groups that apparently on paper appear to be very advanced because they've got this document and that documentation and the people that are taking a lead role have got, you know, they've been in business, they're now to lead groups and so on, been in business for many years. And when the, the, the you know, when the rubber hits the road or the crunch points come, it seems that nobody's actually bought into the work that's been done by the small group of leaders that have been leading the way. So that community starts to crumble because it hasn't got the energy signatures right. So a lot of amazing opportunities here. If you can do your inner work and meet other people at where they're at and co-create from that energy space. Beautiful. That's all really important. Thank you so much. So what are some of the intentions um, that we should be, I use the word should or can be <coughs> setting um, as we're creating community? What would be helpful intentions, do you feel? Well, I think support, being supportive of others, 
bigging other people up, you know, having the confidence to to support others and, and give them a, 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 a boost. Because, you know, it's often reciprocated. What you put out there comes back to you. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, if you're going to be creating these communities, having a kind of diplomat sort of sensibility, um, really, because you're dealing with the whole spectrum of society. And, and you know, there are going to be issues that come up. So really having a sort of set of guidelines that you can all agree on. And then that's your sort of sacred space that you can, um, if people, you know, agree to that, you know, being, you know, kind, considerate and stuff within the space and not allowing abusive behaviour outside of it, except and let you know, keeping that outside of it. Guidelines can be set up and then you can you can have a, a an area of space where people can come into, they can sit and talk with others and they can share their experiences or with people who've got, you know, more experience. So really kind of bring bring together a community with with um a sense of diplomacy but setting up some sort of vital guidelines really is, is a good start i would say thank you athena um i interesting i i would just wanted to ask a question if i might just from that from from that uh share that um i've noticed that that some of the communities i've been involved with there's always been like a, a central idea uh, like a concept um, uh, that has come through, you know, that has come through that being. Um, but but others um, really, really gravitate towards that particular concept. This is how the energies move, you know. Um, yeah. They're pulled in uh, all different levels, as you as you've described. But people are pulled into the community. Um, and and this goes for the online the online. I mean, we can see this as well happening in in all the different communities we're involved with online. This is what happens: people gravitate towards a specific uh, concept. So I think that is so important. Um, I've been I was working with one group called the Paradise Group, um, and you know this re this resonated with so many people. You know, who doesn't want to create paradise on earth? <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, and it resonated with a lot of people. Unfortunately, they didn't get the practicalities uh, correct. Yeah, um, having a strong vision is, is you know, that you can all agree on is quite important because then other people get lost. I kind of liken it to building a, a ship. You know, if everyone kind of gets the idea of building a ship that will get them to another destination where there may be treasures on the other, you know, islands, you know, whatever, but if you're, it's like a community, it's like a ship in a way. If you're, you're all interested in building that community, you know, some people will be better at building uh, the whole part of the ship. Some people are better at building sails. You know, you've all got your roles and really sort of quibbling about um, not really wanting to build the ship are the people that don't, you don't really kind of want in that community because they, they haven't got the kind of greater vision of that, of that whole ship and their part in their role in 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 sailing the ship building the ship operating it or whatever so you know having people um have a good strong vision where they they're clear on on their particular roles it might be all you know different roles but they're all kind of together building one big entity which is the community sure. i think it's, it's quite it's quite a good thing to do and, yeah, I, I feel that that's one of my roles is to help people to discover that, yeah. um, you know, as as because I'm uh, helping the people who are facilitating this in different regions of my country and helping them to discover their vision, their passion, what what they can contribute and how that will be manifested much greater than they expect it will be. yeah absolutely because then that. it's not one dictator going you do this you do that yeah you know it's everyone sort of huddled around the fire and then yeah. saying hey what what are your strengths and weaknesses we can between all of you we can build something pretty cool and and it's not about you know me or paul or us individually it's about 
yeah, we've got our little flavour, but it's about what we can combine and unite together and then get on building. And that's such an important role, Linda, that you're you're doing there, you know, that encouraging people to step up. I think because of what we spoke about earlier, you know, Athena brought up the self-responsibility. People are hesitant and and it's finding ways to to really encourage people, you know, that they're incredibly valuable piece in the in the picture. So, yes, and we all get discouraged. There are good days and bad days. There always will be. <laughs> we all get discouraged. We all feel like, oh, this is hopeless. It's not going to work at all. Forget it. Um, and so that, yes, and I'm very aware of being there at those times to say, well, wait a minute, you know, this was your vision. This is where you were going. Let's not lose sight of that. Let's stay on track here. Um, this is, it's all going to be good as long as we can stay with the vision. I mean, there's a there's icky guy Paul and I use in yeah. our um, our holistic community um, template. Icky guy is a wonderful example. You know, it's a I don't know if you know it's a Japanese principle where you're doing what you love with um, what you're good at, uh, with what combined with what the world needs and what you can make money from. So it's those kind of four intersecting points. And if you can kind of help people come out of suffering. You know, if they come into your community and stuff and then you help heal their hearts and then their hearts find something they absolutely love doing through mm -hmm. through that, those sorts of principles of Icky Guy, you know, they they'll want to com contribute to your community more than, you know, because a, a fresher, if you like, because they'll, they'll know and they understand the importance of what you're doing to help them and others. So, you know, Icky Guy is a good way of also helping people sort of visualize their their dreams or what they want to you know bring into the physical world sort of thing so so i'm, I'm a bit freezing here because i'm in my alleyway oh. <laughs> i've got i've got the tanks and stuff so, and it's freezing so i've got a little blanket <laughs> oh bless you for you so if i sound as if i'm shivering a bit it's because i'm in a cold alleyway i, I thought i could hear some teeth chattering <laughs> I've tried, well not too many of them yeah but yeah athena <clears throat> Yeah, I, I would just like to um, to just say, you know, the work I do has been is, is really uh, working with people's traumas and their very ancient ancestral patterns. Um, and, you know, everyone is is has got a diamond at, in their heart that they're here to bring to the whole Um it's not about finding something that they like to do. It's a, it, it's like like we've said through the program, uh, rather through the through this whole discussion. It's just about moving away all the the stuff that gets in the way of that yeah. of that shining. And I would like to say that what, just to go back to Paul's point, like what what can happen when when you when that is all moved out when the sludge is moved out the way. And people have really found who they truly are, and they and they they feel and experience that. It is one of the most well. I'm sure you've all seen it. it yeah. It's one of the yes. most incredible um, and inspiring for all to to see that and and the joy that it brings when when just one being in a group can do that and yeah. and it's ex and the whole group experiences it with them mm -hmm. and this for me this is might be my life's work but on a personal level and helping others do the same after i'd gotten through my i mean i've just been on a journey this this weekend back into uh somewhere at 200 ad on one of my own little missions of clearing some something out the 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 thing that the, 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 of out of my hologram that just came up from a session I'd done with Rubito, <laughs> which was like you just you know you can't you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, you can't write this stuff down, <laughs> can you? I mean, when you talked about the diamond, I went I went off to that the, that movie Aladdin with the diamond in the rough. <laughs> You know, and, and and then uh, what I what I talk about as well a bit is about how we're all the genies in the lamp, yeah, and we're yeah. the ones that have been imprisoned. Yeah, <clears throat> and you know when we come out of the lamp, 
and we realize that it's our own wishes that we've got to play with and to create with we realize that with great power comes great responsibility so mm -hmm. we actually have to learn sometimes the hard way what it is to wield this power and authority within us that is really truly present and once we become aware of that and start to wield our power from love because this is about heart-led empowerment and 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 following our heart's callings first of all everything simplifies in our life because this thing likes to over complicate everything and you know it's what if this and what if that and oh i've got to figure it all out and when we simplify it into the heart energy what would love do next okay let's just sit with that and feel what would love do next well, and where does that take me it comes effortlessly. This is effortless yeah. manifestation, effortless <clears throat> creation, isn't it? What you do, what well, what actually we're both describing, it, yeah. it's effortless. And to get to that place uh, in a group, oh my God! You know that we could change this world like that. It, well, this, is, this is the so point. It is, like I, that, it can happen. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. and, and yeah. when when you experience that in a group, it's like when you've been in a, a project team in business or you've been in a community group in your community and you've had that kind of desire to co-create i mean women's institute is a brilliant example of how the ladies kind of you know they bake cake they make tea they put on things and events and everyone loves it because it's the whole community gathering around cake and tea and you know garden fates and things <laughs> this is the these are the mechanics of how communities used to operate and sustain themselves with all this beautiful goodwill and love and passion and love baked into the gate that people are eating. This is where we're going back to. It's not any more, it's less complicated by, I don't know, a million percent. Well, well the divine it's is simple, isn't it? isn't it? It's simplification. Yeah. We've made life so <laughs> complex. If, if the divinity is very simple, it's, you know, it's sacred geometry. It's based on simple energetic sort of principles. And you find that you know, the most if something's very simple, it's it's divine, and if something is overcomplicated, it's usually kind of man-made in, in a way. Yeah. And and really, the, Paul, everyone's right, really here. You know, it's your it's your heart heart-led um, consciousness, really, and that that brings your mind with it, uh, your your mind-heart coherence, if you like, because you're being more cognizant or more aware of your your own uh, output and your own uh, deeds and words and actions and stuff in real time. But, you know, you, if it's bringing people back into that heart space and seeing them blossom, you know, when they do get it and they do realize that they're, you know, they've got superpowers locked up inside them and you help them to kind of support them to find them and, and help them follow their passions and stuff. Oh, it's, it's one of the best things, you know, because then people find their, you know, their life again, they kind of live again after because they kind of sh shut down and, and pretty much start withering you know but if you if you come into a nurturing supportive environment people start to blossom again and that's what's so nice about holistic societies you know it's a complete kind of flip of, mm. of current current society which is all about control and authority and and collectivism you know sacrifice yourself for the for the common good kind of stuff and all that and rubbish. Separation, so, separation. Yeah, a, absolutely, you know, separation they, in the mind and separation in the physical yeah, as well. Yeah. And it, I brought up a point um, on on the uh, when you were asking Sarah about the the whole thing of divine flow. Yes. That beautiful. Um, how you know it, we're all speaking to the same thing here but i just wanted to mention that love you know when when it just flows through the energy just flows through you into the heart the mind just follows it it doesn't have to think you just really have to take this brain <laughs> away and allow the 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 intelligence of the of the of basically the body to be honest the body the soul, obviously, the spirit that is guiding it all. Um, it's just, it can be so wonderful. And I think so many of us ha know this. We have these, we have the pieces, you know, I just want to find the group that is gonna, <laughs> maybe I'm finding it here right now, right now. <laughs> yes. Who knows? Yes. You know, I, do, I live in Cornwall 
Um, may I just say just just a little piece? You know, I, I came to Cornwall from Canada a couple of years ago, um, just after the, the pandemic had finished. Well, whatever we wanted to call what was ever going on, <laughs> it finished. And um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really have um, a situation with family where I could go to stay. So I ended up I end, I've ended up actually on the Duchy of Cornwall land. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, well, isn't that interesting? You know, in a community which is run by the crown, uh, you know, and the land belongs to the crown. And, and all of this has been going on. And what is this all about? But you I, could turn it from within. You could get you yeah. could set up a, a holistic community I, from within. I was I we're assure you, a, I'm we're, being, ground. we're all being placed on a global chessboard and we're all there <laughs> for reasons that sometimes we can't quite comprehend in the moment of being there. But we know that somehow we've been we've we've landed here and we're here for a purpose of some What's that and saying? So many like of sometimes... us have been moved. You know, I was moved to Portugal. I, we're definitely acupuncture points of light, and we don't, like you say, necessarily comprehend. Yeah, why yeah. we are oh, yeah. in the location some of the brightest lights are in the darkest places so you know oh, <laughs> as the saying goes yeah <laughs> it's so, so i'd love to just um hear if you've got any last points that you'd like to finish up so i'm going to open it up and just do what a, a final round so I, i'll start again with paul because you're on the top of my screen mm, okay all right well i i think let's see no i don't think let me feel into this um I love the simplicity of things and how that become makes everything easier. So if people are looking at this and going, they came in with going, what's all this holistic community about? Then it's really, for me, it becomes um, taking the simpler path. It's coming from the heart because the heart makes everything simple. And if you're coming from love, then love is usually the right answer. Um, being able to, look at things differently and activating your discernment is another thing that we haven't quite, you know, we didn't cover so far, but that's a really big theme for knowing the difference between what's being presented out there as what's right and what's almost right, because it's not always black and white. So being able to have our own discernment about uh, events or things or principles, and usually that's about a connection you have with either the information or the person that's presenting it. So it's a lot more intuitive. It's a lot more inside out as a game plan for life. And those are some of the biggest transformations that are possible when people start to do that. But if people come in, and it was a beautiful thing just before we started that Linda was saying, and I, I, I was really, you know, just saying the difference from going from what do we do to set up a, a holistic society and you know what's the task list to actually who are we becoming because the task list then will just fall out of that state of being so i just thought that was a, perhaps a beautiful thing for linda to to reiterate but those would be some of the the thoughts for me and actually the pathways are being established now they're known that there are people living in holistic communities around the world and creating some of these amazing things we myself and matt have had a you know, a real joy of being exposed to some of them on the calls that we have every fortnight. And there are some amazing, amazing communities uh, taking shape and form and quite evolve all around the world now. So lots of amazing things going on. So it's a great time to start thinking about, you know, practical steps of building community in your local area. And if you haven't got a local community yet, it probably starts with you. <laughs> <laughs> You, yep, that's I love, right. I love that you brought in the um, discernment piece as well, because the energy system that I work with, we we work with the three brains. So it's the head brain, heart brain, and gut brain, which is where the discernment comes yeah. in. So that was like the final piece. So thank you, Matt. Well, uh, well said, you guys. Uh, basically, all reality is subjective. So whatever you think you create so really basically your reality your individual realities are based on the quality of your internal state um if you can be uh self-accepting loving yourself then the external will present that more to you and so really it's uh there's nothing to 
lot of fear or worry by going within and looking um you know you discover more of your wonderful self and unlock your sort of superpowers if you like um but you can't do that if you're living in fear and worry and anxiety try and become present of your aware of yourself in the present moment and all of life is in the here and now you know the past is gone the future is yet to to be so try and come into the present moment and and cut any uh, cords of attachment that you don't like are no longer serving you. You know, you can establish new energetic connections with more healing, more beneficial things. And this is a constant upgrading process. You know, there are lots of old attachments that don't serve us anymore. And so releasing those with love back to the universe and moving on and constantly upgrading and changing and becoming that beautiful butterfly is, is what you can become. And, and really, you know, um, the more harmonious you are, the more harmonious the world will be. And and more and more of these holistic communities are popping up with these kind of mindsets and um, with a better view to um, looking after the planet and ourselves. And really, I just, you know, my heart sings really uh, with, with all these wonderful connections I'm making and Paul's and you guys are all connecting up with as well. So I just hope this continues and we and we find more and more people you know, that that are, are thinking along the same lines, basically, that have come to these conclusions through their own natural pathways. So, yeah, that's, that's my kind of parting message. There. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. Yes, I would, wanted to talk a little bit about the um, PHA in the United States has set a theme for 2024, which is to bring youth into our community. Um, and I think all the things that we've talked about today are so important in bringing youth into the community. Um, the, the heart, you know, the, the diamond in the heart, you know, for, for youth to know that that exists and to nurture that and for us to nurture that. Um, you know, we talk in the United States about the crisis in mental health for young people and, um, what I do on an individual basis is mentor um, young people and and teach them about who they really are. And as Athena said, get rid of all that um, stuff that's in the way of them knowing who they are. Um, and I'd, I'd love to see us continue this conversation and have some people come in who are um, representing the younger generation, um, because I think they have wonderful, I, I think they have been born with amazing um, abilities and qualities that just need to be tapped into. And as I work with them on an individual basis, I discover that. But it, so, you know, one of our goals is to really um, understand better how to bring the youth into the community that we're building. Amazing. Thank you so much, Linda. You're all doing such incredible work. Athena. Well, so I would just like to, uh, you, I think everyone's really said it all, but there's one piece I would love to bring to hopefully just round it off, which is to the going within piece is so, so important for all of us young, old, in between. And the three things that I just want to say are relax. No matter what you think is going on out there, it's not real. It's all energy that is projected from the collective mind. It does not have to be your life. It does not have to be your experience. So relax. Allow, allow yourself to just be as Linda brought in. And most of all, receive. Learn how to receive. Learn how worthy you truly are. I am so happy that to be on this planet at this time, to see mm -hmm. this awakening that is going to bring people into the full realization of who they truly are. And so I feel very blessed. 
and thank you for bringing me into this group. I feel so happy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. Yeah. Thank oh. you. It's been and, a very powerful, it, very, very <laughs> powerful words. And thank you everyone for taking part. It's it's just been a beautiful conversation. And I'd I'd like to finish off by just really encouraging everybody to shine your light. And if if they if you're feeling there's something that's preventing that do reach out, you know, reach out to the, the communities that we've mentioned, to the People's Health Alliance, the Conscious People's Network, we'll put in the description under this video, or to the individuals on this call, you know, every everyone will be able to support this transition that we're going through as a collective. So thank you all so much for listening and many blessings. Bye for now. Thanks, Sarah. Thank Bye. You, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. God bless. Lots of love.